Welcome to the fascinating world of ants. Not all ants are alike. Over hundreds of millions of years, ants have evolved into a diverse array of organizations and phenotypes. But what truly defines an ant? What common threads connect each ant species? Let's explore the common characteristics that unmistakably define ants as, well, ant-like. An ant's body is divided into three parts, head, mesoma, and gaster. In fact, all insects share this common body division. But what makes ants special are the one or two segments after the propodium that turns into nodes. Watching an ant from above, you'll notice how tiny her waist is. Some ant species have a one-section waist, others two sections. These sections are called pedioles. Their elbowed antenna are another feature to distinguish them from the other insects. Additionally, a small mark on their exoskeleton made of chitin reveals the presence of the metapleural gland. This gland, exclusive to ants, serves as an antibiotic fluid producer, aiding these remarkable insects in maintaining their health and keeping pests away from their colony. The mesoma, also known as the thorax, serves as the hub for several crucial ant features. It houses the six legs, essential for the locomotion, as well as the muscles required for flying. Notably, in males and princesses, this section is bigger, owing to their robust flight muscles. The queen can have scars on the mesoma because she ate or ripped off her wings in the first hours of the colony when she establishes her nest. The legs are divided in three main parts, tibia, femur, tarsus. These terms should sound familiar to you as they correspond to bones found in human anatomy. The legs of an ant come with powerful claws which enable them to cling to almost any surface. The gaster or abdomen can have one of three different extremities, a stinger, an acidopore to project formic acid, or a slit-like opening. Let's come back to the head. All ants have mandibles. The mandibles are the jaws of the ant. They don't really serve to chew because ants, like flies, use their saliva to soften their food into a porridge that their mouth parts can swallow. Mandibles play multiple roles, carrying, lifting, cutting, and even engaging in combat. Across different ant species and castes, mandibles exhibit a diverse array of shapes and sizes. Notably, soldier ants and hunting species show the largest mandibles. A recurring question is, how does an ant see? The fact that sight plays a huge role in how humans interact with their environment pushes us to wonder how other animals can see. But in the animal kingdom, a lot of species use different senses to perceive the world around them. Let's just take the example of bats. They are very efficient hunters despite their limited vision. They adapted using echolocation for catching their prey. Ants possess two eyes, each composed of hundreds of facets called amatidia. These amatidia collectively provide ants with a 180 degree field of view. However, due to their side-mounted position on the head, ants do not excel at perceiving depth. Despite these visual limitations, certain ant species, particularly the hunters, exhibit relatively good eyesight. Nevertheless, most ants rely on their chemical senses to navigate their environment. In some species, the winged ants exhibit a different type of eyes on their forehead, the ocelli. These eyes are equipped for detecting lights and shadow. They are mainly used during flight. The two antennas are composed of two sections. First is the scape. At the end of the scape, an elbow allows the ant to fold her antenna. This ability is a distinctive trait of all ant species. The second section is the funiculus. It is composed of small segments of different sizes. The antennas also shelter the olfactory sensors. These are used to perceive pheromones. As you've probably watched it, ants keep these tools very clean at all times to be sure to stay on the right path. The pheromones are chemical marks that ants can leave on the floor or on any other object to indicate what it is. They allow ants to create tracks which lead to food sources or indicate danger. In a collective organization, pheromones and antenna serve as a more efficient communication system. They facilitate both personal interactions and the dissemination of messages within the group. Ant morphotypes offer various sizes, colors, hairs and shapes. Their diversity brings beauty and mystery to the animal kingdom. 
the insides of an ant's body look very different to what's inside a human. An important dissimilarity lies in the fact that ants do not have skeletons. They have an external armor called an exoskeleton. Their wonderful organism is a perfect mechanism. The digestive system, the circulatory system and the nervous system are stretched all along the ant body. Ants do have hearts, but their hearts don't look or function like human hearts. It's more of a tube running from the head to the abdomen. The blood of an ant is not red, but yellowish or greenish. This fluid is called hemolymph. It is just like a highway to access cells, transporting hormones, waste materials and nutrients. In a human body, oxygen is carried in the blood by the red blood cells. For ants, the process is different. Unlike human lungs, air enters the ant's body through the spiracles, tiny holes in the exoskeleton. The air is then distributed throughout the body. As a result, the ants don't breathe like mammals. You'd never observe an ant running out of breath. Observing the digestive system of ants, we get a perfect example of how social they are. Ants have two stomachs. Food first always goes to one stomach, and then the ant can actually decide if she allows the food to pass to the other second stomach, called midgut. Here she would start digesting the food for her own needs. The first stomach, the crop, is meant to be a reservoir for the colony. Food can go backwards to be shared with another ant. This type of food sharing is called trophallaxis. This system assures the food distribution in the entire colony and helps the ants who can't access nutrients so easily themselves. Besides being the place for digestion, the abdomen is a real chemical factory. The dufours and poison glands are the main chemical producers. Thanks to them, ants are able to develop venom to sting pheromones to lead or be led and produce formic acid to attack or defend. Millions of years of evolution has made ants into one of the most diverse life forms and extremely well adjusted to their environment. Their social organization has helped them to develop special traits according to their needs. One can truly say that in the antum, forms meet functions.